Here's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it note for note, but don't worry. I'll be happy. In every life we have some trouble, but when you worry, you make it double. But don't worry. But be happy. Don't worry, be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. Don't worry, be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. Don't worry, be happy. All right, guys, so 5150 here. Believe it or not, this is my second attempt. I got 11 minutes until the last show, and my doctor kept calling me, would not stop, which I guess is not a bad thing. I love him to death, but man, his timing is really off. <laughs> I didn't even know I had an appointment today, but they do a lot of that stuff over the phone, and now they got VTEL where you can do it over video and stuff, so... Anyway, I guess there's worse problems to have. You know, having your doctor call you to ask you how you're doing, I guess that's not something to complain about. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the song, Bobby McFerrin, Don't Worry, Be Happy. And I wanted to tell you guys, you know, even though I was a little dour last week, I am happy this week because we're going to see some good things happen down the road. Now, I know we're not getting the same kind of attention and treatment that, you know, the stock market's getting because, you know, the, the powers that be, they favor the stock market. And they actively work to make sure the stock market stays sky high and work against, equally as hard, the metals market to make sure that it doesn't, you know, perform in any kind of exciting manner. So that is their MO. That is how the powers that be work. All right. I spent the weekend uh, winding down, guys. I spent the weekend winding down. Um, you saw me playing a little bit of golf and stuff. Um, I got to listen to a lot of my favorite, you know, stacker channels. You know the usual suspects, Fred Gar, Game of, Silver Th Game of Thrones, Florida Stacker, International Stacker. I think even Teenage Stacker put a video out, and I was checking all those out this weekend. Just getting my, my weekly dose of great content and great info, and yes, a little show prep. I do use those guys for show prep because they put out some good stuff. Um, don't tell them I said that, though. But yeah, so if you haven't checked any of these guys out, um, please check them out. They have they have great content to listen to. Put out some good videos this weekend, I thought, and uh, and all that. Okay, so we've got here the Athena Owl for 2020. Okay, from the island of New. I hope I said that right. Um, there's so many weird names out there, but um, these are of course the two dollar coins from um, the New Mint, and uh, they're very cool coins. You look at this owl here, and I'm gonna call that background on owl. I'm gonna call that proof uncirculated that kind of proof looking look at the shimmery water style technique they gave it to it the, the texture and stuff and the same thing on the front side with the queen and um and i think that's pretty cool so it makes for a great coin and it's kind of weird too because even though you know it's you know stackable if you try to turn too many pieces you can see it'll grab anything man it's almost like a set of gears and um, so you know you need to keep them together keep them stacked and stuff if you try to do them like this it's really difficult to get them to uh, do anything different. So, um, I had said this morning that these were still on sale. My apologies, my apologies, my apologies because they were no longer on sale by the time most people got there because they, they in bullion, they killed off the sale by the time uh, the morning started. The morning on the Pacific Coast, I think it was eight o'clock when they uh, changed everything out. And then around noon or maybe 11 o'clock on the East Coast, uh, by the time that sale was gone and now they've got something else in place of it. But at least I heard a couple of you took advantage of the, I thought, um, decent price, decently priced 10 ounce, uh, one tenth ounce RCM um, Maple Leafs. So gold Maple Leafs, um, one tenth ounce, they're around $200. I hope they're still there and you guys can get some of those if you want to get some of those. All right. So, um, yeah, uh, these aisles right here, they're going to come back on sale. I'm not worried about it. They will. And uh, maybe we'll get a lower spot price and they'll come back on sale. But they'll be available definitely for this year, if not for 2021. All right, so markets today. Stocks finished up again. Okay, and they're getting close to the all-time highs. Remember, the all-time high for the Dow is 29,769. If we can break that, then we're going to break resistance and head on to 30,000. But then, when you ask yourself, with 35 million or 40 million people out of work just in the United States, we don't know what's going on abroad. They never tell us. Um, can we really be at all-time highs in a stock market that has businesses that are failing and have really bad price-to-earnings ratios and have people that are not working and making them income? Can that be? Well, no, it can't be. 
But it can happen if you have a willing mint and a Federal Reserve desirous of printing however much the heck money it takes to keep the stock markets propped up in league with the European Central Bank over in Europe, in league with the People's Bank of China, in league with the Bank of Japan and Bank of Russia, whoever, any country right now that has a central bank, those central banks, they say they're not buying stocks. They are buying stocks to keep the stock market afloat, to keep people from panicking and to keep everything from falling apart. I get that. I get that. But you know what? We can help. Precious metals owners can help. Precious metals can help. Okay, but you got to integrate it into the system. Throw some cryptos in there too. There is so much toxic inflation in the system. We could throw, I mean, honest to Pete, man, copper and cryptos and, you know, other precious metals. And if you want to mix some other currencies in there too, you can go ahead and do that. But I can tell you right now, money and velocity is not moving because it's all sitting up there in the derivatives clouds where the ultra rich have it and they're not going to let it go because they're afraid if they do, it's going to rain down too hard, too fast. It's going to create too much money velocity and we're going to head into hyperinflation. I hope I didn't say that too fast. But that's basically what it comes down to. They need to start releasing all this money they've printed into the public. And what does that look like, by the way? They talked about stimulus uh, payments, right? Now, notice they're just jawboning right now. They're just talking about stimulus payments. They're not going to actually do it. Uh, not anytime soon. They're going to go into the summer recess, and they're going to go, and they're going to fart around for a little bit. And once the stock market starts dying off because people think they're not going to take action, then they'll maybe do a little bit of stimulus, but not until Dow 18,000 or something like that. They're going to let it sink pretty good and then have people beg for it, I think. That's my theory anyway. If they put out new stimulus checks here soon then I will eat my hat and I will spend my stimulus on some precious metal. All right? And I'll be like, guys, I was wrong again. You know me. I'm only right 5% of the time, so what do you expect? All right? But anyway, um, you know, stocks did finish up today, you know, uh, within range, like 10% of the old-time highs. Uh, but gold didn't do bad either. Gold finished, uh, what, about 1706 was up $23 today and finished up just over $1,700 uh, uh, an ounce. And then silver, of course, you know, closed in on 18, but didn't quite make it at 51 cents up and 17.95 at the close. 17.95 at the close. That's not bad, considering all of the pillaging that was done to it on Friday. So we're not going to complain too much about that. All right. So with that out of the way, we are going to talk about um, a theory I have about the modern day implied price of gold and silver and how you can possibly take a vacation on one ounce of silver. Now look, let's be honest. Compared to the other investments out there, cryptos, penny stocks, regular stocks, gold and silver just is not an exciting asset. They won't let it be. They do everything they can to keep it as timid and as quiet and as tepid as possible. Like I said, they work actively against the metals markets to make sure it doesn't have any exciting price action or any positive price action. I mean, come on guys, we're talking about breakout levels that are 11 years old and nothing else has been held back. Everything else has broke out. I mean, cryptos had that thing back in 2018, you know, in February when they went buck wild. But that was, I think, central bank generated and not natural at all. Cryptos do want to go up, but they want to go up at their pace, their way, and they want to do it steadily. And they certainly want to be past Bitcoin 10,000 right now, I think, because they have that kind of groundswell behind them. Will they turn into anything? I don't know. Will they become more than what they are now by coupling with precious metals or a hard asset? That would be awesome if they did. Because now we would have some sound money, money that couldn't be tracked and traced. Um, well, to a degree it couldn't be. And it would be money for the people, not for the governments and the banks. And all right. So um, we're going to go ahead and we are going to continue to purchase gold and silver. We're going to continue to buy the sharp and shiny because we know it's going to be the vehicle that's going to get us through the stormy weather they're creating. And they're creating a lot of it. Once it starts raining, these, uh, these derivatives and phony... Uh, monetary uh, um, instruments down, it's going to be like a tsunami. It's going to be like a tsunami, a monsoon, all in one hurricane, tornado, take your pick. And it's going to really wipe a lot of people out. Now, look, the trigger for this, I still say, is the boomer generation, the retirement generation that's coming out right now. They're being real cool about not pulling their money out of the stock market. And do you know why? Because just like anybody else, there's this phenomenon called fear of missing out. And fear of missing out means you don't want to move too early and you don't want to move too, too late. You look at your stock portfolio and you go, well, good grief, I'm making $1,800 a day. If I just wait another month, I'll be in the good, you know, another $50,000. Let me just, you know, go ahead and hang out for a bit. And they keep doing that because the stock market keeps going up or certain stocks keep performing a certain way. And so people are, they're, they're holding back on taking their money out. There's no mass exodus to do that. 
right now. But the ages are starting to creep up on them. A lot of, uh, well, you know, that's not true because it used to be 70 years old and you had to start pulling money out of your um, 401k account. Well, guess what? The Federal Reserve, or at least the White House, or some legislative body, maybe Congress, they have um, basically decreed that you don't have to pull your money out at 70. You can go ahead and leave it in there for as long as you want, and there'll be no penalties. So they're trying to convince people not to take any money out of their 401ks and not to spend it and stuff, but I'm telling you, these older folks are going to want to spend their money. They're going to want to buy an RV, and they're going to hey, Mabel, let's, let's get an RV. Then let's drive it on a cruise ship and take a cruise. And when we get back, we'll buy you that 30 carat ring you've always wanted and um, drive around in the RV with it sticking out the window like a big piece of ice. I don't know. But that's the whole point. They're going to want to really, really enjoy the fruits of their labors. And, you know, when they find out that these pensions are insolvent, they're not going to want to hear, oh, well, we can't really pay you the full amount if you could just take a reduced uh, payment, uh, maybe, you know, perhaps just forego your medical benefit or something. They're not going to want to hear it. They're going to want their money. And they're going to do a run on that system. Once they do it, they're going to start spending as fast as they can. And things are going to start spinning out of control price-wise. And it's going to just feed on itself and become this crazy, crazy hyperinflation we're always talking about. All right? So we buy precious metals to defend ourselves, to prepare ourselves and arm ourselves against such activity, against hyperinflation. Yeah, we use cash too, right? Some of us use cryptos too, right? But this is the ultimate safe haven investment. I don't care what anybody says. Right, it is, especially if you buy like Silver Joker. Nobody knows who he is, where he gets it from, you know. It, and it's like not able, you're not able to track and trace. And a lot of you guys stack like that. I don't. I stack out in the wide open. That's why I'm Silver Fifty One Fifty. Everybody knows my business. I could not be a ninja in the in the uh, Hidden Leaf Tribe because everybody would know my name, and I'd be wearing orange. I'd be Naruto. So uh, it's okay. I like being um, out in the open and exposed just to see who will come after me and see if anything will happen. So far, nothing's happened. So I guess it's okay. So if I'm safe, then you know you guys are safe. Now, look here. There's an old <laughs> there's an old Comparo going out there. Before we get too long in here, I'm going to go ahead and get into this. There's an old Comparo out there that makes the case that gold today is fairly valued in dollars because it can purchase the same amount of goods and services it did back during the Roman Empire. Okay, Like, for example, an example they always use is the same thing. So back during the Roman Empire, you know, you could have a well-dressed senator or council member. I mean, just, just dressed to the nines, man, um, for an ounce of gold. You know, he could have the sash and the silk this and the, the tunics and the, you know, the nice sandals and the headdress and all that stuff, you know, for about the price of an ounce of gold. And today, the same thing holds true. You know, you're Fred Gar, you're in the men's warehouse, and you're just going, you know, completely five stars, and you're getting your suit, your shirt, your tie, your belt, and a nice slick pair of Italian loafers for around $1,700, which is around the price of an ounce of gold, right? So it's the same thing, correct? Uh, wait a minute. There's some disparities there. Yes, you can outfit a man the same way back then as you could today, but what was the purity of the gold back then? Or the waiting? You know what I mean? There were no sigmas or no weighgram scales back then, you know, so your ounce of gold was probably close. And somebody's alarm's going off. Ah, Subaru, imagine that. Um, <laughs> and so you had to just kind of trust the system at that time. I mean, you were probably close to perfection in your ounce of gold, but, you know, that was, that was you know, back then. And, you know, it's not like the kind of perfection we enjoy today. You get a gold buffalo that's four nines fine. It is an ounce. You know, you put it on that uh, weighgram scale, and it's going to come up to be like, you know, 1.01 .01 ounces or something. You know, it's going to be on the money. Or 31.12 grams or something like that. Um, but there's also the issue of manufacturing, okay? So back then, if you wanted to manufacture all those clothes for a Roman noble or official or something like that, somebody that could afford those, you know, that clothing back then, you had to figure, what did it take to produce all that? All right? I mean, like, you know, honestly... You know, we, we can make a suit today, but what if we had to do all that stuff manually? Because back in Roman times, you know, you had to account for the cost of the planting of the cotton, the turning it into linen, the tailoring it, in all to, in, in tailoring it all into garments, all right, and then possibly transporting it, you know, at some point having it fitted, all that stuff. And that all ties into that same ounce of gold. Now, look, how many man hours is that? Because we're talking about people that were doing stuff by hand, guys. There was no like super linen machines or, you know, mass transit or any of that stuff back then. That gold had to account for the people that planted the cotton or whatever the material was that harvested it, okay? They got it to an area where it could be refined, the time it took to do that and actually turn it into linen, okay? 
and then turn it into some nice clothes using dyes and all that stuff, which they were able to do, but it just took time and it took a lot of people to do that. Now, if you were to do the same, use the same technique to produce the clothes that Fred would dress in because he's a sharp dressed man. Fred, I just mess with you all the time. I, I'm just <laughs> having a good time with it. But I'm sure you can dress pretty sharp when you have to. All right, but how many man hours is that? Seriously. Okay, how many man hours is that to produce a suit the way they used to do back in Roman times? Because the ounce of gold says that it's worth all that back then. Same suit of clothes, way different techniques to produce these things. All right? I'm going to tell you, if we take something on the order of just a regular um, price per hour, let's say the average you know, price for, for minimum wage is $8 an hour, all right? I'm thinking we're going to be closer to $17,000 an ounce and $1,700 an ounce producing that suit of clothes today. All right? I think I'm being conservative when I say that. All right? I mean, if nothing else, it should prove you know, how much pressure they have to keep on gold to keep the price um, just completely you know, um, in check, completely you know, disparaged and um, in an unrealistic uh, level for a spot price. Okay, let me tie this all in to the silver dollar vacation or the american silver eagle vacation or the um athena owl uh, vacation all right so with gold having an implied value at this point um using the metric of the roman suit the implied value of an ounce of gold is around seventeen thousand dollars okay with all that man all those man hours and in biblical times and during the roman empire right anyone who labored and worked which was usually around a 12-hour day back then they earned themselves a silver denarius, which probably had the Roman, the, the Roman uh, emperor's face on it. Okay, It was a silver denarius, and a silver denarius was weighed at around one-tenth of an ounce of silver. When a denarius first came out, by the way, my understanding is it was mostly silver. I mean, it was like almost pure silver. But then over time, of course, they started debasing it with base metal to make more denarius, but they just didn't uh, you know, have as much... Uh, Impact. I mean, they had the person power because the, the emperor decreed it, but, you know, people that had goods and services, they're like, I don't want that one. I want, like, a real silver one. Don't you have any of those? <laughs> Good money chases after bad. Um, so, you know, people wanted that instead. But anyway, let's get back to our point. Um, let's say the average, let's get in close here. The average um, minimum wage being $8 an hour today here in the United States, that would put a 12 hour day's earnings at about $96, okay? And that would be that tenth of an ounce of silver in Roman times. So now we're valued here in modern day times, given the man hours, given all that stuff. $96 for a tenth of an ounce of silver. You're gonna have to multiply that times 10, okay? Which makes a ounce of silver $960, okay? $960 for an ounce of silver using the metric of the eight hour, $8 an hour minimum wage, all right? Just um, for calculation's sake, 960 will go into that $17,000 uh, gold, 17.7 times. That'd be your silver to gold ratio. Um, 1770, and they close at 1790. Oh, that, uh, never mind, never mind. I'm going to get into the Bible code. Okay, so um, anyway, um, and that's, that's more relative to the rate they're mined out of the ground. I think uh, gold, silver to gold is mined out of the ground probably, you know, um, 8 or 9 or 10 to 1 versus gold okay not the 85 or 95 or 125 we saw early this year to one with gold talking about the gold silver ratio no naturally out of the ground it's more closer to 10 to 1 or the 17 to 7 17.7 7 to 1 we got right here all right but um you're going to be able to take this implied value of 960 dollars for an ounce of gold and you're going to be able to parse it up against the pressed leisure and hospitality offerings okay when people are out of work and they're not spending money. I know the cruise lines right now, they're acting like nothing's going on and nothing's wrong and they're not going to lose anything and they haven't lost anything, but trust me, they're hurting. They're hurting. And as we get into the reality of the damage that more of this uh, you know, joblessness has created, business is going out of business, um, the phony price-to-earnings ratios in the stock market, all these things that are going to feed into an abysmal third quarter numbers in July, like I told you. I don't see how they could dock them. They did for the month of May into June and made it seem like, we gained jobs instead of lost jobs. We're only 10 million off. It's just insane how bad that calculation is. It really, they should have no credibility anymore. No jobs report should matter anymore after that. But they keep the charade going. All right. So you got your $900, $960 um, Silver Eagle. And that's with no premium, people. That's just the, that's just the spot price, okay? Um, it's based on, you know, hard human labor from um, biblical times to now. 
All right. And I was looking today on cruises.com and I saw nice seven day cruises with balconies for $900. Okay. So that's like a cruise and an excursion, $960. All right. But just saying, you're getting in the ballpark. Okay. And that's right now. That's right now when they are not dealing with price reality. They're not dealing with, you know, actual true price discovery in the cruise, cruise, uh, uh, market, but the cruise market is going to be no different than, say, the resort market, or you know, if you want to go to Vegas and you want to do something like that, you should be here someday soon, able to cash in a eagle or a couple of eagles if the family wants to go a five ounce bar or something, um, or if you have some kind of um, you know one gram silver uh, crypto account, you can go ahead and charge it with a five ounce bar and then go and spend your brains out and just have all kinds of fun on a vacation. Or even if you want to go with perpetual assets and have their metals card, it shouldn't cost you no more than one ounce of silver per person once we get into this price discovery um, to go on a seven or ten day vacation. I really don't think. Okay? Um, but then I was thinking about something else. You guys, think about all the skills you've uh, picked up, all the skills you've acquired learning to shop for good prices on silver. You think you can't apply those same principles and those same skills to finding like great deals on bargain vacations? You know, use your Travelocity, use your, you know, um, a Go. I can't remember what the, uh, not GoDaddy, but some of the other um, travel um, websites out there. But anyway, you'll be able to use those skills and put them with your silver and get yourself just the bombest getaways. You know, and that's going to be part of that uh, shopping spree um, I was talking about. You know, the mother of all shopping sprees and stuff. All right, so. That is my pitch. I had a subscriber today tell me straight to my face. Oh, it's just another one of your pipe dreams, huh? I was like, yeah, it is kind of a pipe dream. I guess you could say that, but you don't know that for sure. Well, how do you know it isn't? I says, well, how did we know that there was going to be oil closing down $37 into the negative on a trading day? How did we know that we were going to have a 10-year um, fixed interest rate uh, below 0.49%? You know, how did we know that we were going to have a virus that was going to put the entire world on timeout for 60 days. Nobody saw that coming, and nobody's going to see this coming, believe me. Now, I could be wrong, but do you guys think that I am wronger than I am right on this? Seeing everything we talked about with the numbers and all the stunts they're pulling, just that jobs number should tell you how desperate they are to cook the books and make us believe that our investments aren't going to go anywhere. And that the only place for us to be is in their just completely, completely bogus stock market. I ain't buying it. I ain't buying it. I'm buying this. I'm buying more precious metals. And here in the coming days, I'm going to show you guys some new stuff. And we're going to have fun looking at it. We're going to talk about it and stuff. We're going to talk about the economy, too. And uh, maybe go through a couple of, um, you know, fictional accounts. You know, we'll go through some stories, go through some adventures with some of our uh, fun, fun uh, stackers and, um, and uh, you know, senior members that uh, hold channels and stuff. So, um, yes, guys, continue staying tuned into the Silver 5150 channel because this is the highlight of my day. But if you do not watch, it's okay. I still appreciate you watching when you can. I understand that your schedules don't accommodate it, you know, all the time. But uh, I try to make it, you know, fun and entertaining and, um, and somewhat educational. Um, you can probably argue I'm not the most educational <laughs> station on uh, YouTube when it comes to precious metals. But I just try to give you what I know and try to show you how I see things. So I hope that works for you. All right. We are done for today. Tomorrow morning will be a morning update. Maybe we'll get some uh, excitement, some fireworks and gold and silver. Any kind of excitement at this point, I'll take it. If we get a huge drop, I'll take it. If we get a huge bounce, I'll take it because we need excitement in this market. Um, we're buying plenty, but we need to break their backs because they intend to break our backs with false information. All right. So that's it, guys. Have a great night. Like, share, subscribe, comment. And if you do subscribe, please click the um, notification bell that says all because sometimes uh, subscriptions get taken away or we'll get shoved down to the bottom of the list. You'll never see us. So, all right. We at the Silver 5150, uh, 5150 channel appreciate you. Have a great night. Remember, your stack is not whack and it's just four ounces to your name of silver. We'll keep you 99% of the game. All right. Take care.